Good evening, evening, everyone. This is uh, Russell Polo. I'm filling in for Sarah Rose. She uh, got stuck in an appointment and is on her way home, but not quite to her computer, so she, she's going to be joining us a little bit later. But right now, I have the honor of introducing to you Carla Churik, who is another uh, Web Center leader. She's uh, one of the coaches uh, leading a team in the contest, and uh, she's been in the top five at the end of the contest and uh, has a lot of success with uh, Web Centers. So she's going to tell us about how to talk to gatekeepers, how, how to handle if you get somebody's voicemail when you're calling into, you know, calling somebody for a contact. Uh, so um, I'm, I want to see what you have to say. So Carla, uh, take it away. Great. Thanks, Russell. So hi, everybody. I hope everybody could hear me okay. Good evening. Um, so this is a topic I want to talk about, and it's uh, with in terms of gatekeepers and how to leave voicemails and really how to get the decision maker or business owner on the line or at least to return your call. So there's many different uh, ways that we could talk about this, but a gatekeeper, let's just start there, right? So it kind of sounds a little uh, frightening a little bit, but a gatekeeper is someone that answers the phone in an organization that is responsible for it. It could be a secretary, an office manager, an administrator, uh, just anyone that answers the phone at the business, right? So we call them a, a gatekeeper because they have a couple of roles, many different roles, but one of their main roles is to not only attend to different customers and clients' needs, but their, their focus is also to keep solicitors away right so they're there to kind of protect the business owner as well because they want to make sure that it's cost effective and time effective as well for the business owner so their main role also is to make sure that they kind of field all of those calls and kind of work through them to see if they are truly solicitation calls or cold callers so the average business owner receives between 10 and 20 different solicitors right a day so if if you're not an active customer with that particular business the gatekeeper the person that's talking with you or answering the phone on the other end they have to be mindful of that as well for for what you're speaking to them because part of their job is to kind of keep you away right so we're going to talk about how to get through the gatekeepers how to leave voicemails and an effective way to do that so the business owner can go ahead and give you a call back. So we just kind of talked about this. This is what a gatekeeper is, right? It's an attendant at the gate in a business organization. So that's their main job is to control who gets through to talk with the business owner. Okay? So in order for us to get notified and tips for, for being effective to getting through those gatekeepers, Remember, they're also people, and we have to be friendly and polite. So here are some tips in order to get through the gatekeeper and an effective way to, to get to that business owner. Okay, so let's first start with dumping the script. Because they get so many solicitations per day, right, it's important that we're, we're just a person, we have a conversation, and we just don't come across as a scripted script because they – they recognize that and it kind of draws up a red flag when you're calling them and you're saying, hey, this is Carla from XYZ Company. I'm here to talk to the business owner about all of your marketing, blah, blah, blah. The gatekeepers, that's an instant red flag. They know that it's a, it's a cold call. It's a sales call. It's not, it's not a warm call. We're going to talk about that. So you want to just dump the script. You want to be a person. You want to have a conversation. You want to be polite, okay? Next thing that's really important, especially when you're talking with these gatekeepers, is you want to learn their names and refer them by their names. Sometimes it seems very simple for us to do it, but if someone picks up the phone and says, good morning, this is Mary, thanks for calling such and such a company, how can I help you? It's important to listen to their names and write it down. So when you're talking with them and you're responding to them, you can say, oh, hey, Mary, this is Carla, nice to nice to meet you over the phone or whatever it is, you're, re you're repeating their name and that's really important. You also want to make sure that you're relating to them in, in terms of re relating to their, their mood, the, um, whatever they have going on, if they're busy and they really sound busy, relate to that. 
oh, it sounds like you're, you're busy. I'm not sure if now is the best time. Perhaps you could let me know a better time to call or get through to whatever, you know, the business owner's name. So you kind of want to relate to them as well. But you want to remember how many solicitations they get a day. You want to be a person. You just want to have a conversation and be polite. You always want to make sure that you assume that they can help you. Even though that they're picking up the phone, a lot of time these people wear so many different hats and that they are the, the person there is the important one, right? Because they're the ones that's going to help you or they're going to determine whether they're going to connect you through to the business owner or not. So you always want to assume that they can help you. So you want to say, are you the one to speak to about this? Are you the manager? You don't want to come across and say, let me talk with the business owner, because that kind of draws up a red flag. So you want to make it personable. You want to also assume that they can help. You want to leverage their knowledge, right? You want to ask for their advice. When do you think is a better time to call? or? Is it better to call before or after lunch? What do you think about that? So if someone is, I'm calling and I get a gatekeeper on the line and her name, let's say, is Mary, we want to say, oh, hey, Mary, you know, good morning, so-and-so. Um, and you want to relate to them. Now might be a busy time or it sounds like you're busy. Are you the, the manager that could possibly speak with about this? And if not, ask, when do you think is a good time for them to call? You want to really ask for them their advice because, remember, they're the ones at the end of the day that's going to determine whether you get through to the business owner or not. So you want to just make sure you dump the script. You want to be a person, have a conversation. You want to learn their names, and that's what just keeps it very connected, and it, it makes them feel good, and it's important to do it. You want to relate to them, and you always want to assume that they can help. You always want to leverage their knowledge as well, and asking what is a better time you know, to call back, whether it's before or after lunch. And always stay polite at all costs. Just remember, because they're the ones that are kind of holding this for you to whether or not that you're going to get connected to the, to the business owner. So you always want to stay polite. Let me just move that. OK, great. Sorry, I had to move my screen. So it's always in your best interest to make friends with the gatekeeper, right? So we want to stop cold calling altogether. And we want to really make quality contact. So cold calling is, is when people pick up the phone and they go off of a script. Hey, it's Carla Churik. I'm calling from XYZ Company. And we do all this online marketing. And I'm here to help you. And you connect me with your business owner. So we want to stop all that. We want to make quality contacts and we want to stand out and be different, right? We want to give reasons for the gatekeepers to allow us to connect with the business owners. So we want to be different, we want to be warm, we want to be inviting, and we, we want to make sure it's, it's effective all in one. So we have to remember that the gatekeepers have a job of keeping the cold callers away. So there's some things that we could do to avoid that rejection, okay? And we want to turn that into hot leads instead. So one, you want to establish the connection right away. So how do you know the business owner? Are you a patron? Are you friends? Is it through a referral, right? So when you're calling and you're talking to the gatekeeper, you could say, hey, Mary, you know what? I was with John last week. Our kids were at the soccer game. He mentioned for me to call him back this week as a follow-up conversation or something like that. So you want to establish the connection right away because then that doesn't make it a cold call anymore. It really turns it into a warm call. And gatekeepers have a connection at that point. So they're more apt to want to connect you with the business owner or the person that's going to make that decision for you for the business. Okay, So you want to establish the connection right away. The really hot leads are referrals from someone inside the company or inside the company's network. So going back to, I think it was week one, right? We all worked on our list of who do you know that works for a small to medium-sized business. You come up with your names list, and you're, you're working off of that. So maybe you're coming up with your names list, and you identified people that you know that work in a restaurant, for example. So you're a patron in this restaurant, and you're having dinner, and you know the waiter or waitress's name by first name basis. So you can say, 
you can have a conversation with the waiter or the waitress and, and maybe you just start talking and asking questions and, hey, uh, Jim, you know, I, I love the menu tonight. I love the special. My dinner was fabulous. I'd love to refer you to some of my friends or how can I help drive more traffic in. The waiter or waitress might turn around and say, you know what, I, I think my manager would benefit from, from you, from him speaking with you. Why don't you call the office? So a really hot lead would be someone like me that had met, let's say, John as a waiter in a, in, in, at the restaurant, and I would call up and I'd say, hey, Mary, this is Carla. I met John the other night. I was in your restaurant having a, the most fabulous dinner. He recommended that I give Jim a call and perhaps I would like to speak with him. Do you know if now is a good time or should I call him back later? What works for you or him? So what you're doing is you're establishing the connection right away, right? You're, you're referring to her by name. It's becoming a hot lead because you're telling that gatekeeper instantly what that connection is and, and how somebody else within the company just referred you. You mentioned the business owner by name, which is really important, and you leveraged her knowledge, right? You asked her what would be a better time to call the business owner back. So you, you by putting all that information into one conversation, it becomes a really hot lead. And gatekeepers, that's what really makes it warm, and they're more apt to connect, have you connect with the business owner. So we want to make sure that we're clear so here's some other things that we could say to the gatekeepers, right? Because we only have so many seconds on the phone with them, if that. And then we, all, we also are trying to leave voice messages as well. So we want to make sure we're specific with the gatekeepers. So when we talk with the gatekeepers, it's important that we establish that connection, okay? We let them know exactly why we're calling and that because they really don't have time nor that they want to just transfer the vague call. So it's important that we did, we are specific. Hey, Mary, I, I met John last week. I was in your restaurant. He mentioned that I could maybe have a few minutes to speak with Bob about X, Y, Z. He mentioned to me afternoons might work for him. So you want to be really specific. And you want to establish right away, too, that you're not a cold caller just by making that connection off the bat. And whatever that connection is, because you've established that connection, it, it takes it off completely from you and it turns it into a warm, cold, uh, a warm call and not a cold call right away. And that's, pretty, that's really important as well. So whether you're a small business owner in town, by you establishing that you're not a cold caller, caller that's important. So you can also say you're a patron of the business or you were referred to this business by this person, or how are you related? So that's important to be specific to gatekeepers is establishing that you're not a cold call, right? Because they're so used to hearing, they get 10 to 20 solicitations per day, they're so used to hearing those scripted calls. Hey, this is John and from XYZ and I can help you. And automatically it's a red flag for these gatekeepers because they're introducing themselves. It's about a company that they're with and how they can help them and all of this. So what we want to do to make it more effective, be different, turn it into a warm call, we flip it, right? So we want to be specific off the bat, establish that warm connection. We want to leverage their knowledge. We want to relate to them at the business if, if they're busy and at, at the moment and they can't really talk, we want to relate to that too and we want to establish that we're not a cold caller because that will be something else that could set us apart from an actual cold caller. So that's, we have a better chance of getting connected with that business owner. Integrity matters. Let them know that we're not trying to sell them anything at all and in fact, we're not even sure that it's going to be a good fit. That's why it's important to speak with the business, uh, the, the decision maker of the company. So we want, to, we want to make sure that's really important, too. And ask directly for the owner by name. It might sound really small, but it's really important and it's really effective. And so if you don't know it, then, you know, if you already know it, then, then do it. If not, it could be a two-step process, right? So we can either ask for the business owner by name, which is very important, or we can always ask the gatekeeper, right? Hey, Mary, this is Carla. I was 
in your restaurant and I loved all of the food and I, I really I want to go on your website and I want to see if I could share your menu with some of my friends uh, and I, I want to talk with the decision maker is there a possibility where I can have five minutes with him or by the way what is his name so you want to write it down and then you want to follow up later and you want to make sure that you ask for that business owner by name so if you don't already know it you can get it from the gatekeeper and then when you do call back you just want to make sure that you're asking them by their name and that's just really important to do so when we think about handling rejection right so we have all of those elements in place call in the gatekeeper they get many solicitations all day remember their job is to kind of field out all of those cold callers so we want to make sure it's important that we establish who we are what that connection is right away we want to dump that script and we want to flip it we want to make it about them we want to make it about the business owner and the gatekeeper because they're really important but we also have to keep in mind handling rejections we always have to ignore the no right because if gatekeepers can't make a yes decision then they can't make a no decision either so we want to be polite rephrase or redirect it so and we still want to be polite and kind as well but we want to make sure we want to ignore it because if they can't make a yes and that means we can't they can't make a no decision so we want to try again right so if we call back and we work harder to establish that warm connection so if we get to the gatekeeper and we're doing everything we're establishing the connection we're leveraging their knowledge right we're relating to their current situation that they're having right then and there and we're making them feel important as well and we're leveraging their knowledge we're asking them for their opinion on what is a better time to communicate with the business owner once we do all that if we're still getting pushed back from the gatekeeper it's not necessarily that okay they're they're just tough and I'm not going to deal with them you want to call back and you want to try again so you want to try different things of working harder to establish that warm connection find something that you related to on the first call so maybe on the first call you're calling the gatekeeper and Mary's just super busy and let's just say you want to make any notes from that call so let's just say she sounds really busy and she doesn't know if this is a sales call and I'm trying to make it as warm as possible and I'm mentioning uh, the business owner's name I'm leveraging her knowledge I'm relating I'm establishing that connection off the bat and let's say for example she's like oh hang on I dropped my pen or let's just say she gets distracted or, or something when you call back and try harder anything that'll reconnect you with that gatekeeper is really important so you can always give a call back and be like you know what Mary I called you last week you sounded really busy I don't know if you had remembered me but I was in the line and you had dropped your pen and and I just thought it was a, a best thing for me to try to call back I'm calling you back now because I want to speak with Bob the business owner and I want to see if this is a better time to speak with him so you kind of want to try again don't give up and remember ignore the nose and if you can't get through to the gatekeeper <clears throat> try calling during off hours either before or after you know lunchtime I find in calling business owners if you really have a hard time of getting through to the gatekeepers calling a business owner between 7 and 8 a.m. or 5 and 6 p.m. before the beginning of the day or at the end of the day and depending on industries there's certain quiet times too during the day that you can try but those would be effective times for you to call between 7 and 8 a.m. I've called contractors 6 30 in the morning because I know they're up and out early so <clears throat> If you do get gatekeepers, try to call back at different times or, or after hours. So the follow-up, like we had mentioned earlier, the gatekeepers, they receive between 10 and 20 solicitations per day. So we want to be different. We want to be consistent. We want to be personable, right? So we want to ask the gatekeeper by name. We want to ask for the decision maker by name. And then you always want to write down the best time that because we want to leverage the gatekeepers knowledge we want to write down the best time for them for us to follow up we want to put it in your schedule in our schedules but but then we want to honor that time right we want to do it we want to follow up because a lot of times and a lot of success especially with this business and, and uh, most businesses and sales and follow-up and that sort of thing when you're talking about statistics is a lot of this 
happens in the follow-up. So you want to write down that specific time, you want to put it in your schedule, and you want to do it. You want to follow up and you just you want to honor the time that the gatekeeper is allowing you to call back at that suggested time. So you want to honor that. And you want to constantly add to your notes so you have more tidbits like what I was just talking about earlier. If you're speaking with a gatekeeper and something just either distracts him or her or she mentions something off offline or off topic of what you're talking about, you want to just gather as much notes as possible. So you want to make the notes so when you're calling back the following week or if, if the gatekeeper recommended Monday morning at 10 a.m. for you to, to contact the business owner, you call back and you still keep it personable, you still keep it kind, you still keep it leveraging, you want to mention her or him by name, you want to do all of those things on every call. and so you want to add your notes and you want to you want to repeat it so then they'll remember you and and that starts the, to build a relationship going okay so that's that's important so when we talk about leaving voicemails i don't know about you but years ago i had no problem leaving a one two three minute voice message but nowadays people we just don't have that time so we always want to make sure, too, when we're leaving voicemails, that we're leaving specific reasons for people to call back. We never want to say, once we get a voicemail, to say, hey, Bob, this is Carla. I'm calling from you know, XYZ, and I'm, I'm just checking in, and uh, I'll check back with you next week. That's not an effective voicemail. So you want to make sure when you are leaving voicemails that you create a reason for them to call you back. And you want to pick one thing from your research, and you want to drop it in a positive way. So for example, if you're going restaurants, by the way, I think um, Sarah had mentioned this in a call. Russell may correct me uh, after. He might know as well. But I think restaurants, something like 85 or 90% of restaurants either don't have websites or don't have mobile-friendly websites. So restaurants are a great example. So you can always say, Hey, Bob, this is Carla. I was in your restaurant today, and I noticed uh, you didn't have a, a menu online, and I'd like to share it with my friends. Can you call me back today, please, between 5 and 7 o'clock? I have a specific question about your menu. So you want to pick something specific. You want to say it brief and short. I think between under 15 seconds to make it effective. And so you want to definitely give them a reason to call you back. You want to use their name in the message before you introduce yourself because you don't want to come across salesy, right? Because that's what they're used to hearing is, hey, it's Carla from XYZ Company, and I can do this, and I can do that. So you want to use their name first before you introduce yourself. Hey, Bob, I was in your restaurant the other day. This is Carla. And you kind of want to go about it that way. So you want to use their name in the message first because that will keep their attention going. Then you want to make sure you say your number at least twice so they could write it down accurately. You could say it once in the beginning, once at the end. Sometimes I've even said it twice at the end, and you repeat it. And you say it really slowly so they could write it down accurately. Remember, more than 15 seconds in a voicemail is way too long nowadays. So you want to keep it short, sweet, brief, to the point. You never state that you're going to call them back because then they'll just continue to wait for you to call back. And chances are, if you got the voicemail the first time, you want to make sure it's effective. So you, it's not like you just have one shot, but in some ways that, that you do. So you want to be to the point. You want to say your phone number twice. You want to use their name first. You never just let them know that you're going to call them back. You want to give them a reason. Say, hey, I have a couple questions. I'm available today between this time. Can you please call me? Make it something specific for them to call you back. And the best times to call someone, oh, yeah, I had mentioned this before, are between 7 and 8 a.m. or 4.30 and 6 p.m. So if, if you're getting stuck with the gatekeepers during the day, these are some other alternative times for you to reach out to the business owner and get a, a hold of them directly between the, these times. And you want to make sure that you keep the time zones in mind when you're following up, especially when the gatekeepers are authorizing you to call back and they're recommending a specific, more effective time to speak with the business owner, you want to make sure that the, the time zones are, are correct, okay? 
and that the voicemail should be short, sweet, to the point, under 15 seconds. People just don't have that sort of time anymore and attention span, right? So we don't want to sell on the, vo on the voicemails at all. We want to be different. So we don't want to just start the conversation and say, I noticed you don't have a menu. And by the way, your website's out of date and that sort of thing. So you want to create a specific reason for them to call you back. You want to use their name and a message first. You want to say your phone number twice. Never tell them that you're going to call you back. So call, call you back. So an example of this would be, hmm, hey, Jim. Hey, Jim, I was in your restaurant earlier this week. My name is Carla. I had a fantastic steak and potatoes, whatever it was. Listen, I had a question about some of your menu items specifically, or I had a specific question for you. Could you please call me back? I'm available today between 5 and 7. My number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, my number is 555, whatever that is. And you want to make sure, please, I'm available between 5 and 7. Quick question, call me back when you have a chance. Thanks. And that's it. You want to keep it short and sweet and to the point. And just pick one reason for them to call you back. And in those 15 seconds, you just you have to establish all this as using their name first, some, some type of a, a, of, of a warm voicemail so it doesn't come across salesy. What I recommend, which I've done this and it's really helped me, because you only have 15 seconds, a good exercise could be taking your cell phone and calling into your business landline or, taking, or vice versa, calling into your own voicemail and leaving a message yourself so you can play it back and actually see how you sound. Because a lot of times we think 15 seconds is, oh my gosh, what can I say in 15 seconds? And you think that you're talking for 15 seconds, but it's interesting when you do this exercise and you record yourself, how many of us sometimes ramble, right? Because as soon as that voicemail goes click and you're ready to leave a voicemail, we get nervous and we forget the reason why we're calling and we just start talking and we ramble on, right? So we can't hit a delete button or a backspace, right? So you want to be um, careful of that. So I know it's helped me and I want to share that with you if, if maybe that would help you by practicing to doing some some voicemails. Awesome. Carla, do you mind if I uh, jump in for this part? Great. Thanks, Sarah. Awesome. Well, before, be, before I do that, I just want to say I hope everybody took a ton of notes tonight because, Carla, you absolutely just knocked, knocked it out of the park. I, I was taking notes, and it's funny that you say um, that it's important to, to even just kind of go through the process of recording and listening to yourself because I find that to be true for everything, like whether I'm giving a presentation, whether I'm leaving a voicemail, um, if I'm, it, it's why we do the role playing exercises in the WCTs is because no matter how prepared your brain is or what you think you're gonna, you think you know what you're gonna say, when the real, you know, situation is happening, you talk longer, you say more things than you wanted to, you forget to say things you meant to say, or you sound like crazy nervous or just things come out in a completely different way than how you want them to. So I thought that was an excellent tip. And um, and overall, there were just so many amazing little nuggets that you dropped in there. So huge thank you to you for that, and also to Russell for getting the session started, because I wasn't able to join until about 11 minutes in tonight. So thank you guys both so much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this off with what your exercises are. I think Carla did a phenomenal job explaining the concept to you guys about gatekeepers, what they are, how to work with them. Um, and I've said this a million times in the past that, you know, the secretaries, janitors, and hostesses, and people that work on the front lines of small businesses really control a lot. Um, they run the world, if you will. And so there's no point in, um, you know, treating them like they don't have value or importance because they have a ton of value and a ton of importance. and they really do get to dictate who gets to the business owner and who doesn't sometimes. So I thought that tonight's session was really important for us as web center owners because as we're going through our weekly exercises, talking to prospects, booking appointments, and trying to get 15-minute consults booked so that we can complete appointments and create new customers, um, many times we're not talking to the business owner first on that first point of contact. And so learning how to really build relationships with gatekeepers, if you will, is a very important skill if you want to be successful 
um, with you know talking to a lot of business owners. So thank you guys, or thank you, Carla, so much for all your input and your wisdom around that. Um, one other little tip that Lenny Allen shared with the um, group during the UK session uh, earlier this afternoon that I thought was really, I mean, I thought it was great. And I've said it a couple of times, but I like how he said it, and, I, and he added some stuff to it. Um, whenever you make a phone call to anybody and you're talking to a gatekeeper or a business owner or you're leaving a voicemail, I always say that people on the other line can hear you smile. They can literally hear if you're smiling and you're relaxed or if you're uptight and you're wound up and, and or if you're if you're nervous. So I, I think that um, you know just basic things um, that we take for granted for communication, um, you know, there, it's, it's a lot more difficult to do that over the phone, right? Because when you're, when you're in person and you're talking to somebody, you can, you know, make eye contact, you can smile, they can read your body language, and they can tell if, you know, uh, if you're comfortable, if you're interested in them. There's a lot of nonverbal communication that happens when you're face-to-face -face with somebody. And we, I think that a lot of people... Um, don't understand that there's nonverbal communication that happens during phone conversations as well. And it's a lot more difficult of a skill to master. So um, what I always do is, or what I always tell people is that the first and most important thing when you're calling somebody, no matter who you're speaking with, or if you're leaving a voicemail, is always to be smiling. Um, because that will definitely be reflected in whatever words come out of your mouth. So smile when you talk. And Lenny actually said he likes to actually be standing up when he talks um, on the phone. So when he makes his phone calls, he very rarely sits down because he said, listen, when you run into somebody face to face, you know, for him, he said nine times out of ten, he's standing up, he's making hand gestures, he's talking to them, um, you know, a, a certain way. And he said he likes to do that when um, he's talking on the phone as well because I believe that that's his way of bringing that nonverbal communication to that conversation, even though it's on the phone. So really great tip from Lenny as well that I thought was worth um, bringing on to tonight's session. So for uh, this week, you know, you're going to do your daily operating procedures and your weekly goals to, you know, uh, contact new prospects, book appointments. I, I mean, I saw a lot of people were um, aiming to schedule 15 minute consults, and I don't know if you guys were following along in the Facebook group, but um, for the people that have booked 15-minute consults, they went really well. They're seeing the light. They're understanding why those are so important and so valuable and so powerful to the process. So I, I want to say that in addition to this new uh, skill that we're working on this week, we want to continue to shoot for as many 15-minute consults as we can. If you're minoring in um, web centers this week, we want you to practice leaving two types of voicemails that you might leave, whether you know the person really well or whether you don't, right? Um, and, you know, when I, when I did this, I usually would stand in front of the mirror and practice just speaking. Um, but I really like Carla's suggestion to actually call yourself and leave yourself a voicemail because I think that having that little bit of a timer um, and the ability to go back and see if you actually left a 15 to 20 second voicemail or if it was actually 45 seconds to a minute is really, really, um, it's a really cool uh, exercise to go through. And I'm I, I, I love that, Carla. I'm going to start doing that myself. Um, now, the second thing that you're going to do is um, you're going to follow up to make uh, the referral or ske schedule an appointment. What that basically means is you're going to um, practice leaving your types of voicemails. You're going to reach out to um, uh, your people, work through your, your gatekeepers, and make sure that you schedule at least one follow-up with them for that week. If you are um, majoring in web centers, you're going to be more proactive about this, and you're going to start doing what Carla said, um, and really not just recording the names of the gatekeepers, but continuously adding notes to each of uh, those, those sheets as well. One of the things I like to do is um, uh, in your web center, you can actually click on contacts and you can label them as a prospect or uh, for, uh, for a potential website or DMP client or a prospect as a potential web center owner or other. When you do that, you can keep actual timestamp notes electronically and digitally on each of those profiles, which is really nice. So some people like to use that as a way to stay organized with all of their notes um, in their prospecting process. Um, for me, 
once I make a new contact, I actually like to print those out and then I just three, three ring hole punch it and throw it in a binder so that when I'm calling people, I just have my binder out and I'm just scribbling down notes as I go. So it's really just a matter of finding what's comfortable for you. But if you're majoring in web centers, you absolutely need to have some sort of system in place for how you're keeping track of your, your process because you want to be a little bit more proactive about moving that process along. It's a little, you're still making a referral in terms of referring the product specialists and um, you know, working as a team but you're probably taking this a little bit more seriously and want to have um, a system in place. If you are a pro, um, you're going to expand on your client and prospect profiles, um, either digitally or like the way that I just described, and make sure that part of each client's profile also includes things like the names of the people that work for them or the people that are important to them. So, um, and I think that's really, really important, you guys. When you follow up with somebody, and you say, and, and they have let you know what their spouse's name is or their kid's name is, and you say, and by the way, how is so-and-so doing? That goes a long way. And when we say build relationships, build relationships, build relationships, it's those little things like remembering the names of people that are important to them or people that work for them that contribute to building strong uh, relationships and trust. Um, write down the common ground, write down the best time to reach. Um, I do want to skip to the last slide and just go over a couple of quick announcements. I didn't have a chance to announce the most completed appointments from the last two weeks, um, but the first week was Maggie Sue from Hong Kong, and this uh, most previous week was, I'm looking it up right now, uh, Jeannie Ivanko from the United States. So um, congratulations to Maggie from week one, and the winner of week two was Jeannie Ivanko. So uh, you guys both won one free month of Web Center fees. Um, we have done our behalf, and the way that you're, you can win that for yourself is quite simply all you've got to do is complete the most um, website and or digital marketing appointments, and um, whoever completes the most for that week from Monday through Friday um, will be uh, awarded one free month of Web Center fees. So congratulations, and if you're wondering, um, Maggie in week one completed five appointments and Jeannie completed um, uh, three. So that is uh, what's going on. Actually, excuse me, I stand corrected. I'm reading that wrong. Jeannie completed two appointments. So it's well within reach, you guys. If you can complete two to three appointments, you have a really good shot at winning the most completed appointments for the week. So guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you to Carla and Russell again. You guys did a phenomenal job. If anybody has any further questions, um, please make sure uh, that you guys um, to take a look at uh, the Facebook group and you constantly post them and continue to post your success as well. I can't tell you how encouraging it is for myself and for everybody else um, that, that uh, sees when you guys are completing successful consults or making sales. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great week. Talk to you soon.